What is up engine heads? Today we'll be taking a look at a real milestone for engines. A set of 3D printed pistons that have recently survived a very demanding endurance test in a pretty serious Porsche engine. Now we all know that 3D printing has been gaining popularity recently but many people still see it as a novelty. A quirky little tool for making funny stuff on your DIY eBay printer. Or maybe as a handy tool for designers to speed up the prototyping process. But many people still think that 3D printing is light years away from actual industrial use. But Porsche begs to differ and they decided to demonstrate the industrial future of 3D printed automotive parts. Now Porsche has been making 3D printed stuff for a while now but it's mostly been parts of your very expensive custom Porsche seat and let's face it surviving the forces generated by a human butt is one thing surviving the forces generated by a 730 horsepower engine is another. A piston exists in a very hostile environment. It has to survive very high combustion pressures, very, very high temperatures, and it has to survive rapidly changing direction as it travels up and down to the top and bottom of its stroke. And this is why 3D printed seat parts are cute, but 3D printed pistons are a totally different ballgame. Even boutique hypercars like the C Zinger 21C, which has pretty much 3D printed everything, can't boast with 3D printed engine internals. And to make this happen, Porsche had to gather the cream of German engineering seriousness. People like this guy, just look at how serious he is as he scans the piston. Now the theme for making the 3D printed pistons in addition to Porsche included Male, Trumpf and Carl Zeiss. Together they set on designing, developing, manufacturing and testing a set of 3D printed pistons for the engine in the fastest 911, the GT2 RS. When it comes to Porsche, it doesn't get much better and much faster than this car. So if a set of 3D printed pistons can survive in its engine, they can likely survive anywhere else. The pistons underwent an endurance test which included 135 hours spent under full engine load. And this is no small feat when you remember that the engine in the GT2 RS is a 3.8 liter twin turbo flat 6 whose full engine load produces 700 metric horsepower at 7000 rpm with the help of 1.55 bar of boost. Porsche claims that all six of the pistons passed the endurance test with flying covers. And although they're not production ready yet, and you likely won't be seeing them in large scale production Porsche models just yet, uh, Porsche says that the technology is here to stay and that the test is proof that 3D printing has a very promising future in engine internals. Now the cool thing about 3D printing technology is that it allows the pistons to have material only where they need it, so only in areas which are subject to loads and stresses. And because of this you can make the piston lighter. According to Porsche the 3D printed pistons are 10% lighter than their forged counterparts. Now 10% in all honesty isn't much when you remember the potential of 3D printing. And ideas and designs of 3D printed pistons were thrown around before and they usually looked like this or this. So far more radical than what Porsche actually made. But it's pretty obvious that Porsche was actually playing it safe here and they left a pretty big margin for error. Because this really was a pioneering attempt and an outright piston failure would be pretty embarrassing and would possibly even give a pretty bad reputation to this very promising technology. But even Porsche themselves admitted that they were playing it safe. Frank Ikinga of Porsche's Advanced Drive Development Department, or PAD, uh, actually says that the simulations they ran on the piston uh, show that there is potential for actual weight saving of up to 20%. 
But despite playing it safe, these new pistons managed to squeeze an additional 30 horsepower from an already high strung engine, netting a new total of 730 horsepower. A very nice feature that these pistons have is an oil cooling gallery that runs right underneath the piston crown. This is something that's absolutely impossible to make using traditional forging methods. And thanks to this oil cooling duct, the piston actually runs 20 degrees cooler. And by reducing temperatures, you reduce the chances of knock, which means you can further advance ignition timing. This coupled with the lighter weight of the pistons meant that RPMs could be increased by an additional 300 RPMs and voila, 30 additional horsepower even while playing it safe. The pistons are created in a Trumpf True Print 3000 3D laser printer. The machine builds the pistons one layer at a time. Each layer is 0.02 to 0.1 millimeters thick. And each layer consists of a fine metallic powder that is fused together with high strength and high precision lasers. The material itself, the fine metallic powder, is a proprietary alloy called M174+, which was developed and supplied by Mali. Each piston is composed of 1200 layers of the laser fused alloy and the batch of six pistons takes 12 hours to be printed. Compared to the seconds it takes a forging press to smash a piston into shape, the printing times sound like an eternity. And once they are printed, the pistons also need to be heat treated and finish machined, so add even more time onto those 12 hours. And as we all know, time is money. And Porsche's 12 hours are infinitely more expensive than somebody else's 12 hours, which is why for the time being, we'll likely be only seeing these pistons in a low volume, high end production cars, but this is just the beginning. Before chucking these things into their engine, Porsche really wanted to make sure that they are up to spec. So they got Carl Zeiss to test and measure the pistons by using light microscope inspection, uh, electron microscope scanning, X-ray microscope and 3D scanning. And honestly, I have no idea what's the difference between all of these, but it's pretty obvious that Porsche really didn't want the pistons to fail. So we know that the printed pistons are 10% lighter compared to their forged counterparts and that they have a nice oil cooling duct that helps them run 20 degrees cooler. But what about strength? Well, Porsche doesn't actually give us any sort of data, any kind of numbers when it comes to strength. They just tell us that the printed pistons are quote unquote extremely strong and quote unquote that they have materials comparable to that of production cast pistons. So they're not comparing them to four ones, although they're saying they are extremely strong. This is a bit contradictory, but it likely means that when it comes to things like tensile strength and ductility, uh, the printed pistons aren't as strong as the forged ones. But this really only matters when knock is happening. And under knock, the printed pistons would likely crack sooner than a set of forged ones which again matters only when knock is happening. And the GT2 RS isn't running DIY mega squirt. It's running state of the art engine management, which makes sure that knock doesn't happen. And even if it does happen, it makes sure that the knock stops as soon as possible. So even if the pistons aren't quite as ductile as forged ones, they're still capable of delivering exactly what the engine needs. But even if you're an old school guy who hates newfangled technologies and refuses to abandon good old forged pistons, you have to admit that we have pretty much almost exhausted the limits of forging technology. On the other hand, the industry is just getting started with 3D metal printing, which means that in the near future, the industry will likely be making leaps and bounds when it comes to 3D metal printing and 3D printed pistons which means that 3D printed pistons will likely be catching up to forged ones in terms of strength sooner or later. But what does this mean for us, for car enthusiasts who can't really afford a GT2 RS? Why should we even care about all this? Well, we should care because this is how new technologies 
usually start? They start in singular extreme examples that nobody can afford, but then they trickle down to the aftermarket and eventually become available to everyone. I mean, think about it. Some time ago in the past, we didn't have standalone engine management or access to build anything. And today we have all of that and a car enthusiast can build a 1000 horsepower engine in their backyard. This was inconceivable one or two decades ago. So it's Porsche printed pistons today, but it might be Ross J.E. Wyseco printed pistons tomorrow. Uh, how soon? Two years? Five years? Well, that's anybody's guess because the game is changing every day and 3D printing is getting some serious R&D all over the world. So it might be sooner than we think. And that's great news because who wouldn't want some amazing 3D printed pistons in their engine build based on a 25 year old power plant? I know I would love those oil cooling ducts in my 90s Toyota 1.6. It might seem a bit contradictory, but new technologies like this one will give us the opportunity to squeeze out even more power and potential from the ancient engines we still love and tune today. But there's another bonus. When it comes to 3D printing, even weird, rare and obscure engines will have equal access to the technology as the popular engines. When it comes to forged pistons, to make forged pistons, you have to make forging dies. And forging dies are very, very expensive. And this is why manufacturers would make forging dies only for engines that are in high demand and are extremely popular because they have to make a profit. But when it comes to 3D printing, there's no forging dies. Basically, you make a piston design, the manufacturer goes control P and out comes a piston. Yeah, of course, it's not that simple, but it kind of is. And making a set of 3D printed piston, uh, pistons costs the same whether you're making them for the world's most popular or the world's least popular engine, which means you can finally make that 1000 horsepower Lada engine you always wanted to make. But tuning and ancient engines aside, technologies like this one, once they become more affordable, will of course also make new mass produced cars better too. And there's something for you electro evangelists as well, because massive research and development has recently been going into copper as a 3D printing material, which means that in the near future, we might see some very interesting applications of 3D printing for electric vehicles. And there you have it. A very interesting, a very important milestone, which seems to paint a very nice and promising picture of the future for us car enthusiasts. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful and maybe even a bit entertaining. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.